What has 10 letters and starts with the G-A-S? Automobile. When someone talks about cars, the, re the words wheels, design, fuel, and engine come to you. But I define cars as passion. I grew up in a family who was passionate about cars and motorcycles, especially my dad. I've always had a powerful bond with cars. Through the wheels and the speed, I find peace. Since my very young age, I've been active in motorsports. When I was four, I went to NASCAR at the Phoenix International Raceway. I don't remember much beside the engine noise. It was a terrible, yet calm noise. Then when I turned 10, I started liking Formula One. I discovered it was not just a sport. It's exciting and dangerous. I started feeling the rush of adrenaline pumping through my veins. It has always been part of my life. When I first drew a car, it looked like this. As you can see, there's not much to understand. But day after day, it got better. Three cars that made my childhood great. A convertible red Citroën 2 horsepower, which I used to think it was a Ferrari. A Ferrari with two horsepower? Wow, I was so ignorant. <laughs> then, a gray Audi A3, and last but not least, a blue Chrysler Pitti Cruiser. By the way, I still wonder why I used to love Chrysler so much. Oh wait, it's because it looked like this. Such a sweet little charm combining old design with new features. Obviously, there's nothing more powerful than my passion for cars and motorsports. I breathe full and live engine. It motivates me to reach higher and higher with no limits. Logically speaking, if I ask you to choose between Lamborghini and Ford, the majority will choose Lamborghini. But yet again, car brand and design can be secondary. Someone once said, don't trust everything you see, because even salt looks like sugar. I asked a few of my classmates to choose one of these two cars as their favorite one. 99% of them chose the orange one. And if I ask you as well to pick your favorite one, you will probably do the same. But let me tell you something. Just like you, my friends got fooled by these images. Because guess what? The gray car is way better than the orange one. In terms of speed, McLaren 720S can go up to 212 miles per hour. On the other hand, SSC Ultimate Aero Top Speed is 256 miles per hour. You might wonder, how can cars go that fast? Well, it's simple. It's called the science of aerodynamics. To make it easy, it is a science that deals with the motion of air to reduce drag and to increase stability in a car. As an example, a Formula 1 car can go up to 247 miles per hour. That's huge for a driver. In a Formula 1 car, it is extremely important to know how to manipulate air. That's where design takes place. Design takes advantage of the aerodynamics in order to generate downforce to increase car's adherence. In other words, to push the wheels harder into the road so the tires give more grip for faster cornering, harder acceleration and braking, and quicker lap times. However, this design has some disadvantages, such as G-force, a physical phenomena caused by lateral forces during acceleration, deceleration, and turns at high speed. For instance, under four lateral G-turn, the Formula 1 weight becomes five times its own which means 3,670 kilograms. Consequently, the driver feels this downforce. In addition to the focus on driving at very high speed, the drivers get exhausted throughout the race. In fact, last year, just before the pandemic, I went to FIA Formula E Grand Prix and met the drivers. They looked all exhausted. I think it must be worse for Formula One drivers Considering sustainability, designers thought about a new car concept, electric cars. Lighter, quieter, and environment friendly, but less performant than gas powered cars. It goes without saying that electric cars will become the norm in the world of automobiles in a few years. For sure, our parents considered producing such a car utopic. Which brings me to wonder, what will be the future of car design in this high pacing world? Thank you.